If you're brand new to being a Shutterstock contributor and you've never uploaded a photo before, this video is not for you. However, I do have a video that is for beginners and I'll put a link up here. If you've already uploaded a number of photos to Shutterstock and you're just looking to increase your sales and up your game, you're in the right spot. Let's get started. Hi, my name's James Wheeler. I've been selling on Shutterstock since 2012. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your public profile to get more sales. After that, we're going to walk through and take a look at my top performing photos and we'll talk about why they get the most sales. Let's talk about why your public profile is important. Think about a buyer. They like your photo, but they need more than one photo and they will want a photo of the same style. So it would be great to get all the photos for the project for one photographer. So they click on your name or the see all button under the same artist. Now they're at your public profile. You want to optimize your public profile so they can find what they want to make more sales. There are two main sections you can customize on this page, the header and the sets. Back on the Shutterstock contributor site, you can customize your header section by hovering over your name and then clicking the public information. There are a couple of key areas here. The first is your profile picture. Make sure you have a photo of yourself as the profile picture because bios are more likely to kick a profile if it has a headshot here. I would also recommend using the same profile picture that you use on social media, so if buyers do follow you on social media, they'll make the connection. Now, I would recommend filling out all the fields here, because it doesn't take very long, but only the top ones are shown on your public profile. Your website and social accounts don't show up on your public profile, because Shutterstock wants to keep buyers on their site. Now, Shutterstock doesn't want to encourage buyers to contact you directly because obviously they want to keep people on their site and keep taking a portion of the sale. So they won't let you put in an email address or a website into your description. So what I do is I just put a note that if buyers want to find me, they can search for Souvenir Pixels. Now, I own SouvenirPixels.com. That's my website. And if you search for Souvenir Pixels on Google, I'm going to be the top number of results. So this way buyers can contact me for additional work if they want to. Now, after you finish setting up your profile, you're definitely going to want to go through and set up your sets. Now, my approach for sets has been to have the first two sets as most popular and my favorites. So buyers can see which photos other buyers likes and the ones that I like the best. Now for the rest of the sets, I know my, from my statistics and experience that most people buy my photos because of a particular location. So if they drill down into my sets, they're probably looking for more photos of that location. So the rest of my sets are based on the actual location. Now this is the section where you use to reorder the sets, but to create your sets, you need to go into the catalog manager, which you can do so by clicking on this link or in the menu. Now, I'm not sure if there's a limit on how many sets you can have, but there is a limit to how many are shown on the first page before you have to click next, and that's 20. So I just include 20 sets in my profile. Now that we're done setting up the profile, let's go in and take a look at some of my best-selling photos on Shutterstock. If you made it this far, I hope you like this video, and if you do, make sure you remember to click the thumbs up down below. If you like this type of video, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Now let's get in and take a look at some of my best performing photos on Shutterstock. This photo of a marine lake is by far my most popular photo, not just on Shutterstock, but on other stock sites and social media. The reason I think this photo is so successful is because of the subject is in high demand, mainly in the tourism industry for brochures, blog posts, websites, and tons of other uses. However, because there's a high demand, there's also a lot of competition. A search for Moraine Lake on Shutterstock returns over 17,000 images. However, I think my photo stands out and I, because I had a great sunrise that morning and I processed it in a way that really brings out the colors. And some 4,000 plus buyers on Shutterstock decided it would work for their project and clicked the buy button. In my opinion, this next photo isn't a great photo, but it is a good stock photo. It has the abstract meaning of choosing your own path when you don't know which path is correct. I think that having the sign here really makes the photo. I think without the blank sign, I don't think it would get that many sales at all.
I captured this Milky Way shot on a very clear cold night. I think I got the composition right on this one and the reflection in the lake really works well. Alright, this one I have no idea why it has done so well. I don't think it would even make my own top 10 of river photos I've taken. I feel like I missed the exposure on it and it really could have been processed better. But some 288 people disagree with me and purchased it on Shutterstock. Now this one is better than the last shot and for some reason I decided to go with a square crop, which I don't do very often but it really seems to work for this photo. Now I think this one is a good landscape photo, but I take a lot of landscape photos that are just as good and don't have as many sales. The reason this one is done well is because of the logs in it, which makes it more marketable. I have seen this used in the logging industry for websites and annual reports. So those are my top selling photos on Shutterstock. If you'd like me to go through and show more photos going down the list, make sure you put a comment below and I can create another video on that. If you haven't seen my keywording video, make sure you check that out and I'll put a link up here. Also, if you want to learn more about how much I've made selling my photos online, I've got a video on that and I'll put a link here. Best of luck selling your photos online.